This afternoon, we're on the south bank of the James River, located in Chesterfield County. Behind us is Goochland County. We are currently in the Middle James watershed. We know all about non-point source pollution. We hear about it all the time and how things we do go down the, the storm drains and into the river, but soil can do that too. Soil is actually a form of water pollution. When we have ground covers, trees and plants, that can absorb that rainwater and help reduce the impact of erosion. Today we are going to demonstrate the concept of erosion and sediment erosion in the James River watershed. We have a container here that's filled with soil and it's covered with a moss covering. In this we have a container that is covered that has soil in it that's covered with leaf litter. And in this container we just have bare soil. So we're going to demonstrate the principles of how having soil covered prevents soil erosion and sediment buildup. We're going to pour water over the soil that is covered with moss. And you'll see that the water coming out of this container is clear. We don't have any soil eroding or running and creating sediment. This container is the one with leaf litter and bare soil. You can see the soil is just a little, the water might be just a little bit cloudier, but it's still coming out fairly clean. Now this container doesn't have anything covering it, and it's just bare soil. Fill it up with water. water is coming out cloudy and we've got clumps of soil coming out in it also. So how does soil in the river affect the James River and the Chesapeake Bay? When there's a lot of soil floating around in the water, sunlight can't get through to the plants underneath that are growing on the bottom. Uh, these places are usually nurseries for aquatic animals and also a food source. So that impacts those animals and affects their lives. When the water slows down and the, the soil sinks to the bottom, we call it sediment, and it continues to hide the food sources and hide the living places of aquatic animals. Sediment pollution in the James River watershed. It's first to make sure that our soil is covered and not left bare. Again, we can use things such as grass, or in this case, moss, to make sure that the uh, soil is covered, or even as simple as a mulch of uh, leaf litter that will help prevent that erosion from occurring and the sediment then moving into the James River watershed. The James River Association publishes a biennial report card of the state of the James. Here you can see a copy of the 2019 report card. We can see in this latest report that the overall health of the James River is at 62%, which is one point less than in the 2017 report, but it is still graded as a B minus. Let's look at a factor that we're looking at today, sediment reductions. The grade for sediment reductions fell from 50% in the 2017 report to 43 in 2019, while regulations for development and construction and agricultural best management practices have helped address sediment issues, sediment still continues to be one of the greatest ongoing pollution threats in the James River. So what can you do in your yard to prevent erosion and sediment runoff? We're going to first take a look at these three images on the screen. In the leftmost image, you can see a bare spot of soil in the right hand of the image. Water moves across that bare soil from right to left and deposits that soil in the ditch. Water then moves through the ditch and ultimately carries that sediment into the James River watershed. In the center image, we can see a yard that has pretty good grass coverage, but the ditch has developed a bare area 
that has eroded over the years. And so that sediment is moving from that small ditch into the James River watershed. In the image on the right, we can see that the bare soil is held in place by grass. This helps prevent soil erosion and sediment buildup. Well, on our last slide, the spare soil was covered with grass. Grass doesn't have to be the covering that you use. In this case, in our experiment, we had soil that was covered by moss. We also had soil that was covered by shredded leaves. So you could use an alternative soil covering to help prevent erosion and sediment pollution in the James River watershed.